welcome to this week's vlog. Coco is behind me with Cassie and I think Gus is about to appear on his bicycle. <laughs> we'll just see. He's supposed to be catching us up. It's unbelievably warm. I don't know if you can see. Coco's actually just like a pretty small summery dog. I have got a coat on because I was dealing with a mud monster. Colin. I am bringing them in when the weather is really hideous, but I'm leaving them out as much as possible because though there's so much grass for them to eat, the fields aren't that wet, they're just a little bit muddy and it just seems a shame to have them have them in if they can be out enjoying enjoying life in the fields and it's so much better for them too. So he's a mud monster. And, 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 <laughs> I've bitten off more than I can chew, literally. We have got um, a bonfire. It's, it's becoming a bit of an annual thing. We did it last year. Some of you may remember that have been following me for a long time. The bonfire and fireworks um, in the garden. We're celebrating early because Arch is going back to school. And so we thought actually we would invite a whole load of friends, well, school friends, but then the numbers have escalated completely. The same thing happened last year. So I shouldn't be surprised, but quite a few people have actually replied today saying they can come. So preparations are underway. I should have shared with you yesterday what I was doing, but actually I didn't have my camera with me and I just needed to crack on. But we're having it, we were umming and ahhing about having it in the summer house or the garage. And actually because the numbers are so high, we're going for the garage like we did last year. But I had to do a bit of rejigging in the garage. And that's what I was doing yesterday. Simon took the children go-karting. So I had a morning to get that sorted. So that is all kind of done and ready, which is good. And I have started cooking. I'm going to do a gammon, um, which we will slice up. And then I've got a whole load of rolls. Well, I say I've got a whole load of rolls. Simon is currently, as we speak, at Booker, which is like cash and carry. And he is, he is doing the shopping, which is excellent. So that's saved me a job. So we're getting rolls and we're just going to do some ham rolls for adults and hot dogs for children. We're keeping it really simple. I have made something quite delicious, which actually I'm going to make another one. Um, and I will share that with you. We're supposed to be, after we've ridden, supposed to be going and doing... Um, a quick, a quick shop just to get a few bits. I've run out of digestive biscuits and golden syrup. I'm making that the chocolate biscuit bite, but with a twist. And boy, the twist is so good. It's utterly delicious. So um, I'm doing that and I might make some soup as well if I've got time. Today hasn't gone completely to plan. Um, I lost a couple of hours. Gus did not want to do his homework. I hate the homework battles. It's just too stressful. Half term homework, ah, I absolutely hate it. Anyway, Coco needs to catch up with me. I'm gonna stop prattling to you because actually there's somebody walking towards me. He's going to think I'm really weird talking to my phone. But I will chat to you um, again later uh, when we get back. that was walking towards me has lost two cows. They've come across the river and he can't find them. So Gus had appeared on his bicycle. So we've sent him off on the hunt of two brown cows. Country life, um, that was a farmer and um, a couple of his, his uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, farm workers on the hunt for them. Which is quite odd because we haven't seen them this way. So hopefully Gus catches up with them on his bicycle. Well, we haven't had any joy finding the cows. We've had a good, a good hunt round. We've been, um, we went up the road and round and, um, yeah, exploring. Coach was asking me what we'd do if we actually found them. <laughs> I'm not very good at lassoing. I've never done that. I watched this amazing, I watched Ballerina Farm. Hannah, she's um, on Instagram. I love her Instagram. <laughs> I need one of her boys. They're amazing at um, lassoing. Anyway, we shall have a bit more of a hunt and see if we're almost home. Send Gus out. Um, 
I'll send the boys out on their bikes and they can go and go have an adventure and see. See if they can find them. This weather is just unbelievable. I need my sunglasses. I actually the perfect te the temperature. I'm just wearing a, a thin white top and uh, my coat, which actually is quite thin. But because Colin was so muddy and I was trying to brush the mud off, I didn't want to be in a white top. So I slung this coat on, but I could easily ride without it. It's, it's glorious. I mean, for the end of October, who would have thought we'd have this amazing weather? Ended up taking the rugs off the horses earlier because it was actually just too hot for me to have heavy winter weight rugs on. I think it was up to 20 degrees. Bonkers. Anyway, we should go and hunt for these cows. I ended up not doing any cooking last night when we got back from riding. I ended up tackling the ironing instead, which at least that is done. Now in here, I have a massive gammon. It's five kilos. I'm just gonna add in some sprigs of thyme and an onion just really roughly sliced. These are homegrown onions and I'm so pleased with them. They have been amazing and I had a really good harvest. I'm hoping that this isn't going to overflow because I could do with an even bigger pan. <laughs> this is the biggest, the biggest Arga pan I think that they do. Anyway, in goes that. So I'm doing a gammon for tomorrow evening. This has been soaking since last night in cold water. And I believe it's really important to soak your gammon for a good amount of time. It has had all of last night and most of today is actually half past three now. I don't know where this morning has gone. Well, I do. I was busy, busy sorting the house and a whole load of other stuff and just sort of running around. We had a plumber here first thing. Oh, so I must give you a plumbing, plumbing update. Everything is now working, which is such a relief. They have had to come back a few times because there is such a line scale build up. This is a bit of blade mace, which I am adding in, just a pinch of that. Um, they've had to come back a few times to empty out the, the build-up of lime scale. I think we need to look at getting a water softener, but that isn't a priority at the moment. We're just going to have to deal with it. They've also dealt with a few other little plumbing issues that we had, like the kitchen tap was spraying and other things. So that is really good that everything is working. I can bath, I can shower, it's just bliss. A handful of black peppercorns, in they go, and that is it. I'm going to bring this to the boil, which is going to take a little while because there's so much in there. I'm going to bring this to the boil on the aga, and then I'm going to leave it to simmer for three hours. So on that goes, and. A Lola update. She is getting on really, really well with the dog trainer. It's very odd without her. We do miss her, but I tell you what, it is slightly easy without her. I shouldn't say that, but she's just so um, exuberant um, that it's quite nice just not having a bouncing puppy around. Well, we've got Florence instead, but not a big one anyway. So it's great that she's getting on really well. He has said that she's a really bright, intelligent dog and is learning really fast. And so that is great. I'm not sure when she's coming back, but I think we'll speak to him again this weekend for an, for an update from him. So I'm still waiting for that to boil. I don't think it's far off, but I thought I'd talk to you about TikTok. Oh my goodness, it's a terrifying place. I've had some really nasty comments. Some nice ones as well, but some really nasty ones. And I know that putting yourself out there on social media, you are opening up, you know, a whole, a whole thing. Um, and and actually on Instagram and and YouTube with you guys, you're all so so lovely. I've had one really unpleasant person who just sort of kept coming back. I kept blocking her, and she kept coming back, and and was really quite nasty. But anyway, she seems to have given up. And that did, if I'm honest, really hurt. It really hurt. And now, and I can't remember how long ago it was. I think it was a year, I don't know. But it's amazing how actually you kind of learn, well, I've learned that I'm not gonna be everybody's cup of tea and 
there will be people that think that I'm posh, that think that I'm privileged, that think, you know, all sorts of things. I make assumptions. There'll be people that don't like my voice. There'll be people that, you know, just don't like me. And that's fine. Um, there are people that I don't like, but I don't leave nasty comments and tell them that I hate them and I think they're awful. Um, but I've said to Simon that I will, I'll see, you know, I'll find my tribe on TikTok. And if it's, if it's not meant for me, then I will just remove myself. But I've had, I've had some horrid comments. I've had some people being pretty ruthless, but I've also had some lovely ones as well. And I know that when you put yourself out there, you're opening up, um, you know, a can of worms. So I just, I thought I'd update you on the TikTok, um, the, tic the world of TikTok. It's quite scary, but actually some, some of my videos, mainly cooking ones, have been really popular, um, which is great, which is really good. And it's, um, yeah, uh, what's the word? I don't know. It's all, it's all quite nerve wracking. Quite, um, quite fun though, in a way, learning a new platform and terrifying. <laughs> definitely not exhilarating but um but yes i'm getting to grips with it anyway i'm gonna look and see how this is going on Ooh. there's somebody at the gate with a big box that's not far off Be back in the road. i've just taken that off that ring because actually it was going to need longer longer time so i've popped it on the floor of my roasting oven to bring it to the boil hopefully quicker there and I'm not letting out so much heat so I am saving saving on that front but this big box has arrived so I thought we'd open it together. I know what it is. Oh goodness it has literally it's been one of these days. Hang on a mo. That was Sai. He is on his way back. He is taking the boys to the orthodontist. Archie's braces I think off today which is exciting he is at the end and she's going to have a look at Gus and see because he has got a really bad overbite but I have ordered a new iron because ours has done really well I have had it for a long time but it's not steaming well and with the B&B sheets I need need it working i have tried to do line scale i've tried to do all sorts of things and it's just not a happy running so and it's also taking a lot longer to iron with it and i need i need things that work for me with me not against me we don't need extra extra time so i have gone to tfal again i did a lot of research into this iron and I've gone for this one and I will keep you posted as to how I get on. I like, hang on, let's move you down so you can see. I like the steam generator ones, which this is. It also comes with a warranty. So I ordered this on Amazon and I went for, for the warranty with it. The good thing about this, as opposed to my other one, is my other one needed cartridges. Um, that God, this is so it needed cartridges inside it, which was quite annoying, and they were expensive, and they were quite hard to get hold of. So, and this one is more compact, which is also good because we like compact. So hopefully, and it says it's an express compact and so I shall I shall do that I didn't need to do the ironing last night I should have waited I should have waited for this bad boy to arrive now something else to update you on is I've got an Amazon an Amazon something or other um shop front where I can put all of my favorites into my Amazon shop front for you to you to see what my favourites are and things that I use and things that I like and enjoy and my recommendations. So I will link that down below in this video because 
that's a very excited little boy. Um, I will link that down below so you can take a look at it and they are affiliate links. Um, so, you know, just wanted to, to let you know that. But I think, I, I don't even know when Black Friday is, which is really bad. <laughs> As um, an influencer, I should know these things, but I haven't actually got a clue. But it's there and I'm quite excited about this. And they range in price from like 80 pounds up to 350. So it was, you know, quite, quite a huge variation and um, I was quite pleased actually I managed to get this for 115 which I thought was you know kind of sensibly sensibly ish priced I mean I I need an iron um, we do a lot of ironing particularly with the B&B sheets and you know I could get away with not ironing you know the under sheets and all of that but I want to do a proper job I want to I want guests to arrive and see beautiful beautiful beds beautifully made so um I spent time ironing and I also kept up on watching things on tv and my favorite youtubers and that sort of thing so I do that while I'm ironing so I think that has come to the boil now and I take that rack out and very carefully, very carefully because it's heavy, move this from that oven to that oven. And then I need to set a timer so I know how long it's cooking for. Good morning. I ended up not filming anything else last night. I think I left you and I put the gammon into the simmering oven. And then Coco and I went out and got stuck in the most horrific traffic. There was roadworks and I'd been promising her. She wanted to go and get a new pair of joppers and I'd been promising her all week. And things kept happening and we didn't get there. And she was so disappointed. So we tried to go the day before, the traffic was awful. So we ended up turning around and giving up. But yesterday we were determined. <laughs> we got there. Well, I said, if we get through to the other side of this town, at five past five, we can do it. If we're any later, we're gonna to have to turn around. We left home just gone four. That's how bad it was. And normally it should take me 20 minutes. Anyway, we got some jodhpurs and we did all of that. But by when we got home, the boys were back and they wanted to watch a movie. So we did that. And I actually had some mending that I needed to do. So I got out the sewing machine and I did my mending while watching the movie. The gammon is now ready. I'm a little anxious because Coco's got a show jumping competition this morning. Archie is playing golf and Simon is in go slow mode. I need to get this gammon sorted, but I thought I would share with you this loaf of bread. So this is, in fact, let me go and grab the flour and show you. This is Wessex Mill Six Seed six seed flour bread and I just did it in the same way as I do a white loaf and it is really really delicious um that is a good one so that's just come out of the the, the bread maker so I is hopefully I just saw a more past going out for a shower to get ready because it's got to go to Tesco's before I should get that out and get my hands dirty I have saved quite a lot of the water, the stock that I cooked that in. So I've got two large yogurt pots. I'm actually giving one to a friend because I know that she loves it. I'm gonna put one in the freezer and then I've got two jugfuls um, here because we need some of that for cooking it. I'm not gonna cook this now. I'm just gonna prepare it and when we get back from the show jumping competition slightly wish I hadn't agreed to do it but it is so close to home that it seemed it seemed mean of me to say no you can't do it so I'm just going to cut the string um, and you may wonder why there is a witch's hat on top of a riding hat behind me it's fancy dress show jumping. So Coco is going to be a witch. 
um, Hooch is going to be a cat. We're not going all out in the co costumes because they're jumping. I just don't think it's very safe. So it's minimal fancy dress, but I've glued and I'm hoping it's going to dry over there. It's not well stuck, but it might last one round of show jumping. I'm hoping. I might need to get my needle and thread out, but actually it's not that easy to stitch. So, um, yeah, I thought glue was the best option. And I've also got, you probably see, all of our socks hanging behind because um, when you watch this, they will all be back at school, but Currently they're on half term. Archie is here. We've had a lovely, lovely two weeks with him, but I need to get everything washed and ready for him to go back to school. So the washing is hanging up there. Right, I've taken the string off. Now, I am, I don't want to take all the fat off, but I want to take quite a lot of it off. Florence is chewing the rug behind me, You're going to trip me up. I'm just going to slice to start with this fat off here. Ooh, and a whole load of water. It's got a, a tea towel. It's a bit messy. Sorry, it is really action stations here today. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Um, a lot going on. And I feel like I'm a bit behind and that we've got like 70 odd people coming this afternoon. Um, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. I've got a friend who's sweetly, she, um, she said, Charlie, can I come and help? And her and her daughter are coming at four o'clock and everyone else, I think is coming for six, six thirty. And then we're having fireworks at seven, followed by ham in a roll or a hot dog and mulled wine. Uh, the reason why, I'll tell you that story now, the reason why Cyrus has got to go to Tesco's is he went to Booker and the other night, the night that he went, the day he went, we were in bed, it was quite late and we were about to turn the light off and he went, well, he said a bad word. Um, ah, I have, I forgot the mulled wine. Um, and I said, don't worry, it's fine. It's not a problem. It's not a big deal. We can get some elsewhere. So I went to Tesco's yesterday and they only had, so I'm making my own mulled wine um, and the wine that I wanted, they only had five bottles of. And a delivery had come that day, but the, um, the hydraulics of the the the, um, the thing at the back of the lorry to unload it failed, so they couldn't unload the de delivery, and the truck had to leave without unloading its goods. So Tesco's, um, our local Tesco's, was <laughs> was quite empty yesterday. So they were hoping that they were going to get another delivery in. And so Sai's gonna go and pick that up or if not, find something else. So that is his mission this morning. And actually, I'm gonna need some more clothes because I used a big handful of clothes in last week's episode, making the japonica and clove jelly. So I will need some more because I need some for the mulled wine and I need some for this, which I'd forgotten. I thought I just had enough, but I don't think I do. Anyhow, so we're taking, I'm just trimming the fat because you don't want to have a huge hunk of fat on your meat. You like to have a little bit, but not too much. In fact, I don't really like to have any, but I know some do. So we're just trimming that up. I think that is pretty good. Right, I need to go and find the clothes. Sorry, it really is a madhouse. The dogs are barking, someone has gone past. Now I'm just using a knife to score across the fat. 
in sort of um, a little bit of a pattern, a bit of a diagonal and trying to keep it even-ish. Um, sorry about the barking, I know it sets your dogs off too when you're watching. Um, and it also there's a strange noise um, over there. Billy the tortoise is in his box and he is eating his breakfast of cucumber and lettuce. And so if you wonder what that noise is, that is Billy. Right, I've got my cloves and I have just mixed some demerara sugar. You see, I was emptying, I had a couple of packets of demerara open and I mix them, but they're different types, there's a funny line. I've mixed demerara with some Coleman's mustard powder in this little bowl here. And I have got my cloves. Now, let's do this. Sense. I'm gonna put it in my roasting tin now. I'm going for a small roasting tin because it doesn't need to be a biggie. So with my cloves, uh, I'm just going to pop the spiky bit down into the fat. And this is how I do my Christmas gammon. I am pretty sure I've shared this with you numerous times before. But I thought while I was doing it, I know there are new, new subscribers here, um, which is lovely. Welcome, if you're new. Um, I thought I'd just share this with you while I was doing it because it's such a great one um, for a big crowd. And it's really easy and you can have it hot or you can have it cold, it doesn't matter. And I think it's always best to go with a slightly bigger piece of gammon. I always get green unsmoked from my butcher. Go with a bigger piece and then you've got leftovers that you can enjoy, um, you know, throughout the week. It, it actually lasts a good sort of 10 days um, in the fridge. So it is a really, really good one to do when you're entertaining lots of people. And this seems to have shrunk, I hope. I hope it's big enough. Anyway, it will have to be because that's all I got. And now I'm just going to put this over the top. I'll probably actually get my hands in. It doesn't matter if some falls into the bottom at all. That is not a problem. And um, one of the reasons why I put the gallon water into a jug is because just before I put this into the oven, I'm going to add some of the gallon water, this here, into the bottom of my tin probably about two to three centimetres and so it will steam it rather and it won't dry out and that way um, your ham won't be really dry it will be hate the word but it will be moist which is what we want and I do get um, a lot of compliments for my gammon because I cook it for various people uh, over the winter and they always say how delicious it is and I think the secret is to soak it overnight so I bought this gammon on Wednesday I put it in to soak on Thursday and then I soaked it all of Thursday night and most of the day uh, sorry I soaked yes I soaked it Thursday night and most of the day on Friday and then I cooked it with you on Friday and now it's Saturday and I am going to roast it. You can boil it earlier and then let it cool a bit and then take it out and then roast it on the same day or as I did yesterday 
fold it later in the day. I let it cool down last night and then when it was cool enough I just put the whole pan in the fridge. Luckily we've got a huge fridge and then I took it out, just let it warm up slightly and then um, have prepared it here for you, taken off the fat. The reason why I let it warm up slightly is it's just I just find it's easier to get the fat off that way. Um, but you don't have to, you can do it stone cold um, from the fridge. And then I'm going to put this back in the fridge ready. I'm going to keep my stock to hand and I'm going to tell everybody not to throw it away. It's not, it's not sitting there to be chucked out. Um, put this in the fridge and then I'll take it out, just let it warm up slightly, add the water and then roast it later on when we get back from the show jumping competition. Right. The next thing I'm going to make, and I've already, I think, oh, what was that? It's Coco, she's, she's cleaning her jogger boots. Um, I've already mentioned to you that I was going to do it, is my chocolate biscuit bites with a twist. And I've got some here, which have gone down really well so far. They are delicious. I'm gonna make one more batch of those. So this isn't healthy, guys, but treats, 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 treats. Sometimes we need them, don't we? And if you've got a load of people coming, this is such a great thing to do. So a whole pack of butter. I've got uh, some agave nectar and it's 125 grams of that. Right. 60 grams of cocoa powder and 160 grams of um, Cadbury's hot chocolate drinking powder. Archie has gone to Tesco's with Zyla to get the wine. John has left me a message from Tesco's to say that wine didn't come in. I wanted to use this wine, which is a Malbec. I used it, I bought it for Gus. Mummy's filming, can you be quiet? Yes family life is a bit hectic. Um, this Malbec I bought to make spaghetti bolognese the other day and it was five pounds a bottle and perfectly fine. Um, Sai doesn't drink and I'm not much of a red wine drinker but it was fine so I wanted to get more of that but it didn't come on the delivery and because that delivery there was a problem with that delivery then he was hoping it was going to come later but it didn't so anyhow. Sai has gone to get what he can with Archie and Gus is playing Archie's FIFA game. Um, so, yeah. We do let them have a bit of time gaming because I think, gosh, it's so difficult parenting today. Um, it's about getting a healthy balance, isn't it? And I suppose everything in life is a healthy balance. And if they do what they need to do, then, you know, as long as they are under control with gaming, um, I don't have a problem with it. I do notice that if they have too long, they um, become little monsters. So um, they're aware of that. It is about getting the right balance. Now my Coco has bashed these up. She's cleaned her boots. And are you going back up? To the yard, darling. Oh no, you're cleaning. She's now cleaning her chaps. Yeah, use that towel. That's perfect. Um, this will have warmed enough, and I can pour it in. So it's a whole tin. In that goes. A pinch of sea salt in there. Um, and then I'm just going to put it on a low heat. I just want it to melt. I don't want it bubbling. I don't want it boiling. Just melt it. I don't want it to get too hot. So I'm just going to leave it there. And actually, chat to you about something else. Children's clothes. I get so many questions about where do I buy children's clothes from? So, when they were younger, I used to go to Amaya on Chelsea Green and get the most beautiful, beautiful little outfits. And there was a company in a shop in Duke of York Square called Neck and Neck, which is a Spanish company. Amaya is Spanish as well. It's 
Spanish and Italians just have such exquisite children's clothes. Anyway, I can't get them in things like that anymore. In fact, Coco probably would, but the boys, no way. But an order has just come from H&M and Bowdoin for the boys. Now, obviously, Arch is 14, but he does like to look smart. He's playing golf later, and they're chinos. Arch and I went on a mission in Guildford to find chinos, and there were none, absolutely none, at his size. H&M, and I've been buying these for a while, they're chinos. They're okay, they're perfectly fine. Um, they look better, obviously, once they've been ironed. But he wears these, and you know, they look quite good with trainers as well, but then he can smarten them up and wear them with smart shoes and a shirt and tie. And they seem to have these in as standard in navy and this uh, sort of sandy beige colour. So I'm going to name those to go back to school because he has already, in half a term, outgrown his chinos, um, which is great, he's growing. And then some pyjamas from H&M. They're just sort of tartan bottoms and a white top, which are fine. John Lewis's are always a good bet as well. Let me stir this. Um, John Lewis's are quite good for children's clothes. They have a good section. And then for more formal things, I need to get this right. And I did have a card on the fridge, but I don't have it there anymore. Uh, start Smart Clothing. I'm pretty sure it's that. I will leave it linked down below. They have beautiful shirts, jumpers, um, all sorts of, you know, just occasion, more, I mean, I would love the children to wear clothes like that every day, but it's not going to happen. It's not realistic. They just want to be in tracksuit bottoms, which quite frankly, I hate, but there are battles, battles to pick and battles not to pick. And, you know, they want to be comfy. They want to be children. They want to look like everyone else, but they know that, you know, some formal occasions call for dressing smartly and actually they, they, they're very good about it but Start Smart has some great things. I bought the most beautiful coat for Coco last Christmas which actually I need, it's reminded me, I need to try it on her and check that that still fits and a navy blazer for Archie and what I would call proper shirts. So um, hopefully that is helpful. This is a coat from Bowden for Guppy. He hasn't tried it on. I have just opened it and Oh, let me show you. Coats have just walked in. This is going to my car. Don't want really you just put them there. Um, um, it's literally it's just just a puffer. But um, I actually must have lost his coat that was this size. But I thought quite snugly and quite warm. Gutter gets quite cold, so he needs to try that on. I need to check that it fits. Um, but. Bowden had a sale, which was, well, they had 25% off, which was really good. Um, Jules has some good things. And where else? I do get quite a lot of stuff for the children from H&M, like just basics, um, which, which are fine. You know, their shorts, their polo shirts, they're great. If I lived closer to Bister Village, I would be going there. Um, I used to go, when I had more time on my hands, I used to go to um, Ralph Lauren, kids Ralph Lauren in Vista Village and get bits for them in there. But um, it's a day trip and an exhausting day trip too, so actually I haven't been for years. Um, I've never been, <laughs> sorry, I'm chatting to you while walking up there. I've never been to... Um, Gunwolf Keys, which is closer to us, but um, maybe at some point I need to go and check that out and see if they've um, got things. Anyway, I must crack on with this. I'm just having a quick matcha because I need it today. Matcha is something that I absolutely swear by, and I do have a discount code of Charlie10, which I will leave linked down below from leelinton.com.co.uk.com I think it is um it's just the best stuff I love it it's my rocket fuel so it's caffeine but it's slow release and it's it's green tea basically 
but it's it's a really really good quality one and it doesn't give you the kind of high that coffee does and drinking caffeinated drinks it's just slow release which is perfect lots of people ask how i drink it and i literally drink it in a little bit of water and down it goes i'll have the next swig in a moment i've actually got used to the taste it's not the most pleasant but the benefits of it are are good and actually i've got used to it i i, I like it now there we are done right cakes and smash these biscuits up that has all melted and i've just taken it off the heat so it's not too hot and you will see why in seconds so i'm going to add in these probably take quite a mess I've just had somebody reply saying, I'm sorry, it's such short notice. And she'd said, I can't let you know until the last minute, but can they come? So the numbers are drastically creeping up, but it's fine. The more, the merrier. So I'm just gonna mix those digestives in so they're all coated. I've also done a boo-boo and forgot to write greaseproof paper on my shopping list and I have run out. It's a slight disaster. I have just called the boys, but of course, neither of them answered their phones to say, can you get me some while you're in Tesco's? But they've presumably left their phones in the car. I don't know, which is a little frustrating. Anyway, I have got a little bit, which we'll just have to do. Any big bits, I am just squashing with a spoon as I mix it through. Then I'm going to add some more teasers. I couldn't get any big bags, so this will just have to do. So I'm going to tip in. Um, when I made that batch, I used two large bags of more teasers, but this will just do. And then a bag of mini marshmallows, a large bag, and in they go. And this is why you don't want it too hot because they will all melt too quickly. It doesn't matter if they melt a little bit, but you don't want them to melt too quickly. So just then mix those through as best you can. It's quite hard work. Thank goodness for my workouts. That's all I can say. The chocolate will melt off the Maltesers and the marshmallows may melt a little bit. But that's absolutely fine. Right, let's clear the decks. Oh, there's one more Malteser. So this piece of grease food paper, I would like it to come up the sides. But hey ho. It's all we've got, so we've just got to work with it. Um, I did think that maybe I could use cling film instead, but um, and another reason why you don't want the pan too hot. And just scoop that all in to your tray. Coco's come in and said, Mummy, we need to go. So I'm just going to squash this out and try and get it as flat as possible and pop it in the fridge. And then by the time we get back, it will be done and ready to slice up into bite-sized bits. I have squashed this out, flattened it out as much as possible, made some room in the fridge. Well, actually, Coco's made some room in the fridge for me. Pop this in the fridge and then later I can slice it up. We are back from the show jumping competition. Coco had a couple of poles down, but actually it was the biggest, the biggest she has jumped. So she did really well. Was happy with that. A couple of poles, it can happen. Anyway, um, we're just getting everything ready. So I was back later than I thought. I've just parked the cars in the field, they're there. And I'm just gonna unload quickly. <laughs> it is action stations so quite literally <laughs> i've got to make a few miracles happen in the next couple of hours 
It's incredibly dark. I haven't got any of the lights on at the moment. But I have taken this out of the fridge. I've just let it warm up a little bit. I have put some of the gammon water stock into the pan. And I'm just going to... it into the roasting oven I'm putting it I'm not putting it on the floor but I'm putting it quite low down and I just want this to be sort of golden on top so it's going to be about 30 minutes in there uh, maybe slightly longer but I'll check it I'll check it after 20 minutes and see how it's doing Alexa set the timer for 20 minutes I've got all oh. starting now Thanks, Alexa. I've got all the washing behind me. <laughs> it's the last, the last load of darks before um, Arch goes back to school. So that is good. And friends are about to arrive and it really is action stations now. So I will share as much with you as I can whilst I'm rushing around like a slightly headless chicken. Right. <laughs> We have an hour till kickoff. I'm relatively calm. I've just got my basket and I'm going up to the kitchen garden to pick some dahlias to make the table look pretty. Size disappeared on me. I'm not sure what he's up to. But it will all be fine. It's just it's just good friends. Um, and yes, never try and do a show jumping competition on the day when you have, I think, we're well over 70 people now, but it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be jolly. We've got fireworks. The bonfire is ready. We just need to make the table look pretty and decorate, decorate the barn. Here are the last of my dahlias, so I better get chopping. A basket full of dahlias and Sai has appeared back, which is excellent. He has just told me that it's going to rain but the BBC says it's not going to rain till 2am and I'm going with that. So time to make the table look pretty with this little lot. So pleased that we haven't had a frost yet and they're still going strong. Uh, it's my gorgeous friend Deborah who has been incredible running around. Couldn't have done this without her. Look at the mess everywhere. But, but... It is six o'clock. We've done it. I've changed twice. It is so hot. I went for a thin shirt. The mulled wine is on. There's Sai. He's in, um, he's just in a t-shirt. Oh, I thought you bought sparkling water. No, no. Okay. It's fine. We don't need to panic about that. I've got some in the fridge. It's fine. We've got the soda stream. We shall make sparkling water. That's for the elderflower, for the non-drinkers. Mulled wine here. The boys are playing football kind of been vaguely helpful we need to heat up the soup the gammon is done fireworks ready darling yeah yes you under control yeah. cooks is just changing into her dress she's probably about to appear any second is she about to appear any second cooks you ready you ready no she's not coming anyway i'll chat to you again in a row i wish i had actually a head camera here um could take you with me but it's a bit it's a bit tricky i don't and this is our setup i'll turn you around and show you nobody's arrived yet which is good but it's only five past six and i said between um six and six thirty to arrive and fireworks at seven the girls have been busy decorating and then this is our spread here i'll open those near the time but i didn't want them to dry out and then that is the gammon slice. Deborah sliced all of that for me. And I just need to go and get the salads and the other bits and pieces. And Coco still hasn't appeared in her costume yet. And here she is. She's wearing this orange little number and my boots. And the first car has just pulled in. Pretty much everyone is here. I've just brought this mulled wine in to top it up. And we're going to light the fire in about 10 minutes. But so far, everyone's having a good night. It hasn't rained. It's still really hot. I'm outside. It's almost November and I'm outside in a thin shirt. It's ridiculous. 
that noise is Penny and Florence who are in the laundry room and they don't want to be in there, they want to join the party, but it's too risky. So all dogs are shut away and the ponies and Colin are in their stables. So they are perfectly safe and happy up there. Anyway, I must get going with this. Simon is lighting the bonfire, which um, he's a bit of a pyromaniac. So this could suddenly get a bit lively or not. And right. it's off. I told you he's a bit of a pyromaniac. Gus is dressed as Scooby Doo. Cass's stable. I'm um, on mucking out duty. What a fun night that was. It was brilliant. And I think the great thing about entertaining like that is everybody's out of the house and everybody had left by like 9.30. So it wasn't a ridiculously late night. It's quite a lot of clearing up to do. There's still a little bit more to do. I've actually took, I took <clears throat> all the food in from the garage, <laughs> closed the doors and I'm not sure when I'm going to reopen them. <laughs> probably, um, probably in a couple of days, in all honesty. We have got, um, well, Arch is going surfing this morning and the weather is pretty hideous, but he is keen to go. And then we're going to have a family lunch and I need to muck out the fields <clears throat> and do his last bits of name taping because he goes back to school tomorrow evening. The other two go back to school tomorrow morning. Tess has just come up to see me. Tess! She's actually, she's deaf, she can't hear me. She's just gone into the hay barn. Um, <clears throat> so I think once he has gone back to school, I shall open up those doors and clear up. There's not too much. Um, there's just, yeah, bits and pieces, mainly recycling. Let's try and show you Tess scampering around. There she is. She comes and helps me with yard duties. I have left, Coco ended up having a friend for a sleepover and they're snuggled up in bed together like a pair of old ladies wearing their 90s nattering and i've just left them to it the clocks changed last night so we've got an extra hour and i thought i'd just come up and get this done and i quite like being up here on my own i know that might sound ridiculous but i will put in a podcast in a moment and just crack on i've done heatcher stable next door i've just turned them out the fields are holding out. I don't know how much longer we can eke it out before they're in full time. But I bring them in at night just to kind of save the paddocks and um, let them dry out and what have you. But the forecast is okay and it's so mild still. Anyhow, yeah, back to the party. It was really fun. We had um, just lots and lots of friends. Deborah and her daughter Sophia were so helpful. I couldn't have done it without them. Next time, I am definitely not doing a competition. Um, but it all, I think it all went really, really well. Only, only hiccup was because Arga goes into slumber mode at six o'clock, which I had forgotten. Um, the sausages didn't brown out, so we ended up having to fry those. So that was a little bit of a kind of, ah, uh, what are we gonna do? Action stations. So I remember next time we're entertaining to put the Arga onto manual mode and not aims because um, that was a bit frustrating. But you know what, it didn't matter at all. And the children all had fun. We were so lucky with the weather. It held out for us, which is excellent. Uh, the fireworks were great. So, so I loves, loves the fireworks. We've got a brilliant place near us that sells fireworks and you just buy a box, a kit from them, light it and it, and it does the whole display, which is so clever, it's amazing. I remember in the old days as a child, my father sort of running around lighting a Catherine wheel and various things like that. How things have moved on, hey? And actually, I've just remembered saying that, that my parents used to do this um, every year and I hadn't really twigged, but 
It's so fun. And there were a couple of children, as they left, they said, Charlie, are you going to do this again next year? We absolutely loved it. And I think it's lovely, particularly when they move on from a school, that it's a really great way for them to catch up with their friends and, you know, run around and, and have fun and, and what have you. So anyhow, I must, I must get tackling. I shared this with you. This is for you, horsey lot. I shared this pitchfork, the ultimate pitchfork from KM Elite. They are the best. They really are the best. They sell them as shaving forks. They market them as shaving forks, but I find them really great on straw as well. I also use them so when the fields get too wet, I turn out in the sand school and they are brilliant in the sand school. And when the grass isn't too long, I also use them for pea picking the fields and they're really robust, which is excellent. Maud has come in to join me <laughs> as well. I love having the dogs around as I'm you know, going about my yard duties. Anyway, let's walk out. <laughs> done. I used to do beautiful banks around my stables with straw and my brothers, my brother had a girlfriend, Sandra Ulfer, she is a German event rider. She won um, individual bronze in the London Olympics and team gold. She came to stable here and they didn't do banks and so I think, do you know what, save the time. If she doesn't do bags, I'm not going to blooming well do bags either. So those horsey people will understand what I mean about bags. They do look lovely, but we need to save time. We need to be practical. All I need to do is have a quick sweep up and move on to Colin's stable. That is a much bigger job. Cassie is so easy to muck out. Yard duties all done. Been listening to your podcast and now it's time for breakfast. I thought I'd better share with you how the iron is, and we are pretty impressed. In fact, I normally iron, well, it, depend, it, depend, it depends on the time of day, to be honest. If it's in the evening, I iron over there, but actually the lighting's not very good, and I watch the TV up there. Or I iron through here. It's just set off the fire alarm and caused a little bit of a ruckus. Um, <laughs> Simon's phone and said, oh my God, what's happened? And I said, no, it's the steam from the iron. It's pretty powerful. This is a powerful bit of kit. So I thought I would share with you how I iron a fitted sheet. Now I have shared this with you before, but somebody said, please, will you show us how to do a super king one? So this is ours. I actually need to change our bed sheets today. So this needs ironing. So first things first. Two corners, pop them on your ironing board. Then go to the other end and go inside out. So you've got the seam there, both sides. And put this hand up into that corner and this one in to that corner, like so. Give it a good shake and try and get the corners right in. So you've got it like that. Make sure that you've got a clean floor because you don't want to put your sheet down onto the floor. With all of our dogs, I whisk the vacuum around before I, heave, uh, before I iron. So then place that corner onto your ironing board like so. Now look, this is just for us. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I do like to give it a good iron. So hold it as flat as you can. Now this has some powerful steam. I am seriously impressed with this iron. So this is the Tefal Express Compact, which I will leave linked down below. I love the steam generator irons. Um, I've used them for quite a few years. So then when you've ironed that bit, just move it around the ironing board, trying to keep it as flat as possible. You know, it depends whether you are a complete and utter perfectionist 
or just going for good enough? And to be honest, I am going for good enough. You can press the button, you can steam away. Um, like so. I have got these fitted sheets are from John Lewis's and they are, actually I should check the label before I, they're the 600 thread count, but they feel really beautiful, silky, lovely, really, really great quality. They've lasted us a good few years so far. So just a little bit of steam and just keep moving it around your board. I have got a super big board. This is a Baranti size C. So it's a bigger ironing board than your standard one. But I just, well, I need a big ironing board. We've got lots of sheets that get ironed here, particularly running the B&B. &B. And so I find that having a big ironing board is essential. Then when you've done all of the main bit between the two corners, just position that carefully, that corner carefully on there and just go as best you can in to that corner. I am really, really impressed with this iron. And then just get that side as flat as you can and iron up to that edge there. And we are done. Done, done, done. Then you want to get your hands into your corners like that. And I put that corner over that corner and flip it over. Hopefully you saw what I did there. Let me show you again. So you've got your hands in both corners. It's ironed and you put this hand, I'm using my right hand over my left hand and flip it over like so. And then I've got it like that and like that on that side. And I'm just gonna place it on the ironing board like so. And I'm just gonna fold that in there, that side in and then I am going to fold it in half again like so and then I'm going to flip it up and there we are done. That is how I iron and fold a king size, super king size fitted sheet and it's the same principle whether it's a single, whether it's double as to what I've just shown you. You can fold them in lots of different ways. I've seen people do them in all sorts of ways, but I think that that is absolutely fine and perfect to go into the airing cupboard. Actually, this one is gonna go straight onto the bed because I'm a little behind on my ironing because I've been waiting for my new iron to come. But this is a great bit of kit, so it's got a big thumbs up from me. I had a lovely message from somebody a few days ago asking if um, I would share advice about teenagers and whether Arch would, would share his advice as well, obviously being, being a teenager, being 14. And I asked Arch if he would come and sit and chat to me and film that. She said, Mum, I really, I really don't feel comfy doing that, which I totally, totally respect. So him and I have had lots of discussions over the last few days about, about this and about parenting and all that jazz. So I've asked him um, his advice for parents from a, teenage, a teenager's point of view. So Arch has just turned 14 and uh, many of you know that he's away at boarding school. Um, half term is just coming to an end. He actually leaves this evening to head back, back up to school. 
So his first thing, and if I'm looking down, it's because I have written lots of notes from him. His first thing was about getting the right balance between letting letting you do what you want to do and and having to do stuff. And I think you know, everything in life is about balance. And, you know, in today's world, with phones, with gaming, with all that stuff, it is about healthy, a healthy balance. And I talk about this quite often. You know, my kids know that they've got to get up, they've got to make their bed, they've got to have breakfast, they've got to get dressed, they've got to brush their teeth, they've got to do their things that they do, you know, every day and to kind of help help around the house and then if they've done all of that they haven't got homework to do absolutely fine to go and and game archie's got into fifa this this half term and him and gus have actually really bonded over um fifa which is excellent because they were um i think it's difficult for gus he's 11 and he can see his brother and sister sort of massively growing up and he was really annoying them. And then they have bonded over FIFA, which is excellent. And sometimes, you know, if that works, that that's what it's all about. So it's about, you know, getting the right balance between having a bit of the fun stuff, having a bit of the stuff that they want to do, but the other, the other stuff has to kind of come first is, is what we do. And I also will say to them, right, you've got an hour and then, and I'll give them like a time. I will even set a timer so they know when their time is up and they need to go and, you know, do something else. The next thing Arch said was to listen to us and to, to, to listen to what we have to say, to listen to what he has to say. And so we do, you know, really try to communicate a lot. We do a lot of talking in this family and I can sense if he's not feeling quite himself just to leave him, let him be, but let him know that he can talk to, to Simon and I about absolutely anything. He's also really lucky that he's got um, some great godparents and we chose godparents really carefully that they can talk to them they can spend time chatting and if there's a problem that they don't want to talk to Simon and I about then they can talk to their godparents um you know or to anybody else and I think that is really really important for um for for children to know that they've always got somebody to talk to and if they're going through a particularly difficult situation, that might be a therapist, that might be an external source. And I've asked Archie if I can share this with you and he said, yeah, that's fine. Archie didn't have a particularly uh, happy time at his last school. There's nothing wrong with the school. Coco's there, she's head girl, she loves it and it works for her. But he wasn't thriving academically or or, or with his sport and so I think he just felt pretty flat and pretty low about himself and all these hormones rushing around too and we could sense that he wasn't as happy as we would like him to have, to have been and there was nothing particularly that happened but you know he just wasn't he wasn't flourishing and I spoke to a friend about it and she said, you need Eddie in your life. And Eddie is the most incredible guy. It's really difficult to describe Eddie to you, but I'm going to try. So Eddie works through sport. He works through movement and he, he gets people to open up and talk to him through physical exercise. So we took Archie once a week to see Eddie outside in a park. Eddie is a really cool guy. He um, is covered in tattoos. He's got an incredible beard. He's got piercings and he's really kind of in touch. Whereas Simon and I might appear a little bit kind of stuffy and stiff, but Eddie is cool. And so Arch immediately felt at ease and like this is a cool dude I can talk to him and they did battle ropes they did weights they did boxing and 
Eddie was asking questions and Archer would open up and talk to him about his feelings and what was going on and he could get his anger and frustration out through his sessions with Eddie and he really got into boxing and we actually got have got a punch bag that hangs in the garage and you know sometimes I'd say you know just just go out there and you know beat the living whatever out of that thing and get your frustration out and that was seriously seriously helpful for Archie and he felt in a very safe place with Eddie he felt that he could communicate and talk to him about anything and about his feelings and that was amazing and what he needed at the time because he just felt um he just felt flat he just felt like he wasn't thriving and he's he's uh, i i think that the, the school that he was at, there were some really great sportsmen. There were some really academic children and Archie's a bit dyslexic. And I, I, I feel that if you've got some really great sports people, um, then the others don't get so much of a look in. And so they can't improve because they're not getting the action to be able to improve, if that makes sense. So actually getting his frustration out with his sessions with Eddie was super, super helpful. Um, so the next thing that um, Arch talked about is communication. We've talked a little bit about that, but it's about communicating, you know, with us and about his feelings. It's about talking. It's about having really open, honest conversations. And I like to think that they our children can talk to us about absolutely anything and we're not going to go oh my goodness um it's about being broad-minded and it's about you know listening and not reacting and it's about thinking about it mulling it over and then maybe having your reaction whereas a reaction in the heat of a moment can pass real negative judgment does that, does that make sense? Hopefully I'm making, I'm making sense trying to explain that. But sometimes you just need to kind of listen, absorb, think about it and then respond. So Arch said um, for him, finding, finding his thing is really amazing and us allowing him to do that. So Arch's kind of main thing, his main passion um, at the moment is surfing. He absolutely loves it. And so, you know, it's not easy. We're an hour from the coast and he's he's at school, you know, miles away. Um, he can surf where he is at school at the weekends, uh, particularly on a Sunday. He hasn't yet, but hopefully, hopefully he will. He's only been there for half a term. But this half term, he has surfed twice in Sussex. The surfing in the summer is pretty non-existent here, which is why we go down to Devon. Um, and 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 he, you know, loves his surfing. And it's about finding, you know, finding your thing. And when he can't surf, he is, um, he loves his boxing. He loves his bicycle. Um, he loves his cricket. He's really sporty. And actually, one of the great things about where he is at school now is it's not... I wouldn't say it's a really competitive, sporty school. And so actually Arch has gone in and is is doing really well sports-wise. And because he's doing well sports-wise, he's in in the action. And so therefore he's improving quicker. And so he's really thriving as a person because he struggles a bit in the classroom. And so if he, I, I think with children, if they feel that they are achieving, if they are doing, you know, something well, if they've got their thing that they thrive at and they're good at, then it really helps with their confidence and with their self-esteem. For me at school, I was terrible at sport and really dyslexic. So academically, I was pretty useless. And riding and horses were my thing until I was told when I was 14, I had to stop riding, which completely shattered my world and that's when I found side saddle and that you know became my thing for a number of years and 
and and that was really great but i think everybody needs to have a thing that that they enjoy that they can thrive in and it doesn't have to be like massively competitive but something that they love i mean whatever it might be um that is so important and i think it's really important to give your children as much as possible the opportunities to you know to find what it is that you're good at there are local cricket clubs there are local football clubs there are local rugby clubs get them involved get them to go along to have a taster session try it out you know it could be canoeing it could be um you know all all manner of things mountain biking rock climbing whatever it is um there is something for everybody and i think that is the most important thing and actually arch does too and he has found you know things that he loves and things that he's passionate about and that is what is wonderful about him um being away at school it is not wonderful for us at all but he is really throwing himself into everything and finding things that that he loves he actually went abseiling and rock climbing i think they climbed up and abseiled back down and he said it was pretty scary but he did it and the sense of achievement when you have done something when you've overcome a fear is so great that that gives you a real confidence boost and it is all about confidence and it's about nurturing them so they are confident it's about having open honest conversations it's about you know communication it's about knowing that they are in a safe place and and can talk to you and you know this this person that got in touch and asked me to talk about this is is an incredible person they are adopting a 14 year old which is why they they asked for Archie's advice and I think that is such a remarkable thing to, to do is to adopt an older child and to give them um, to give them a family and let let them know that they are loved trust is the next thing and it's trust is so important it's so important that they can trust you and you can trust them trust is something that can be easily broken but I think it can be repaired by you know having open and honest conversations and we have decided to trust our children they know the difference between right and wrong because we have a lot of conversations about it and I will give them examples um you know if if people have uh, you know we, we will talk about things if there's a situation at school or with one of their friends that is wrong I will talk to our children about it and I'll explain why it's wrong, why it's inappropriate and why we don't do that kind of thing. And I think those having those conversations is so important. And it won't, I won't be like lecturing them, but we might be in the car chatting about something and something may have happened. And I'll say, OK, you know, let's let's talk about this. Let's let me, you know, and we will just kind of hash it out and, and, and have a like really open, honest conversation about it and I think then the children they know the difference between right and wrong they know what their boundaries are they know what's appropriate and what's not appropriate but they only know that by us teaching them it's our job as parents to teach our children the difference between right and wrong so we have decided to trust them and we haven't put any tech uh, restrictions on them now, some of you might be like, what? You haven't? And let me discuss it. Let's let's talk about it. Um, Simon and I have had long, long discussions about it. And we have decided not to put any restrictions in place. So let me actually just first say to you, uh, Gus doesn't have a mobile phone yet. Coco and Archie do. They're not allowed their phones in their bedrooms at night, overnight, because I want them to get a good night's sleep. Um, and they're not allowed them at meal tables and you know i'm not having them sitting sitting there for hours on it you know we, but they're not going to be sitting in the car on their phone and stuff i like to talk to them look out the window all of that stuff so they're not like on it 24 7 at all but the restrictions that i haven't put in place are with regards to what they can look at and we have decided not to do that because we want to trust them 
And if we are putting loads of restrictions in place on what they can view online, when they're not in our control, when they're not in our home, what are they going to do? They're going to look at stuff because they're going to think it's like the forbidden fruit. If you say you can't have it, you can't have it, you can't have it. Well, why can't I have it? I want it. It's that kind of mindset. So we have decided as parents to not have those restrictions in place. Obviously, they don't watch things um, that are inappropriate on the TV. They know that. They were talking the other day that there was a film that was a 15 and they knew that they weren't to watch it because there would be things that weren't appropriate for them. And we've had this conversation with them sort of over the years. And again, it's, you know, with sweets, with fizzy drinks, if you don't let them ever have them, when they can have them, they're more likely to go what? Especially, you know, with alcohol and, uh, you know, things like that. That and, and I think if you start when they're younger about having the trust in them to not do things and they know that if they were caught doing something really inappropriate, then there would be boundaries put in place. There'd be serious co consequences. There would be big discussions about it. And, and they know to respect us as parents. Um, so that, you know, that's why we, we've done what we've done. Um, and it's been really interesting having conversations with friends about it, all going, you know, through, through similar things. Anyhow, um, the other thing on my list was, yeah, tech boundaries. We've talked about that. And then at school, and this is something that I really noticed working brilliantly with Archie, is if they don't do their academic work, if they don't do their homework, if they don't, if they're not reaching their goals academically, they're not allowed to do the fun stuff. There are consequences. So they will miss out on sport. They'll have to not do the, you know, the things that they really, really love and enjoy. They'll have, be having to catch up. And so therefore, Archie is, you know, really conscientious about his homework, about getting his work done, about all of that stuff, because he wants to be able to do the fun stuff. And that seems to be working really well as a school, not just for Archie, but for lots of children there. Um, it's just black and white. If you don't do your work, if you're not getting your grades, you don't do the fun stuff. Um, and that's, you know, one of the reasons why we sent him to this school is because there is a lot of fun stuff. There's a lot of amazing opportunities. I just talked to you about the rock climbing and the ad sailing. I mean, that's incredible. He's um, been camping out in the mountains and climbing Munros and all sorts of things. And they all go sailing and there's, there's lots of wonderful opportunities for them, but only if they have done their, their work. And, you know, that's something that we again do here if you've got your homework done, if you've got your schoolwork done, then you can go and game with your friends, then you can go to the party, then you can go to the whatever. If you haven't done it, then I'm sorry you're not going. And then lastly, I am finding this really helpful. I know I shared it with you last week, I'm sharing it with you again. It covers so many different topics from, um, you know, how the brain works, um, sleep, how important sleep is. It's about, it talks about taking risks. It talks about tobacco. It talks about pot. It talks about drugs. It talks about stress. It talks about how the teenage brain works, um, the digital invasion of the teenage brain. It talks about gender matters. It talks about sports. Um, it talks about crime and punishment. It talks about beyond adolescence. Um, you know, th this is, um, I only just started reading it, but it's, it's a really, really great book. And I think actually <laughs> needs to be our Bible for, um, for, you know, going into to life with teens. So I hope that that is helpful. Um, I hope that, you know, me having lots of discussions with Archie over the last few days and getting advice from him has been helpful. And he's he's a pretty sensible chap. Um, and 
it's it's really really lovely for Simon and I to see him thriving and flourishing um, because it hasn't always been easy and it's not always an easy journey there are ups and downs we don't always get it right um, but it's it's about communication that is the most important thing communication is key understanding spending time talking the more time you can invest in your children i think the better and whether they are yours or whether they are adopted ones or whether they are um you know um relatives rel you know children of relatives i think it's really really special and i love um i love seeing Archie's relationship with with his godparents we spent um we spent a weekend with one of them right at the beginning of half term and then he spent Saturday with his godfather and he had a really really lovely day with him um and 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 it's really magical and so it's you know it's not necessarily our own children um but if we can invest time and you know talk to them I love it when we have other people's children over and, and sitting down and chatting to them and seeing how they're getting on. And um, I think giving people your time is really, really important um, because time is precious, but I think children feel, you know, it's such a busy kind of hectic world that we live in with everything rushing around and everything going on that, we can forget to spend time um, talking and communicating. Anyway, I hope that this has been helpful. I'm gonna end this week's vlog here. We've had a bit of all sorts from ironing to getting ready for our bonfire party to me chatting about, about teens, but um, thank you for watching. I'm sending lots of love. Remember to, um, to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you again next week. Thank you.